Getting help for people with mental illnesses can be difficult, and for her new documentary, Crazy, that's what it's called, our next guest followed the story of one young man diagnosed with schizophrenia who was forced to be medicated by the government, and joining us now to talk more about it is Lisa Zumwalt, filmmaker and producer of Witness Documentary Films. So, Lisa, we want to hear about this film. It recently came out. Here we know this is something that you've been working on for several years now. What inspired you to do it? I've always been interested, I think, in stories where there's a tension between social policy and law and individual rights. And a mental illness is a great lens to look at that tension. Mm -hmm. And did you, how did you connect with this subject? You follow around a guy and his father, right? And they're basically the two main characters in most of the film. Right. The story is really about this young man, Eric, who's diagnosed schizophrenic. He's been in the mental health system for like eight years, always been compliant with his meds. But meds have side effects, and he became worried that he was getting a side effect that was going to be permanent. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to see if he could go off his meds or lower the dose considerably. And uh, the county decided they didn't want him to do that, and that's when we started filming, was when they came into conflict over who was going to control his treatment. Mm -hmm. and, and why did the county feel, I mean, did they have a legal right, essentially, to force this medication on him? Well. Yeah, yes, and but it's also a super good question because um, the precipitating event that led Eric to be force treated was he was uh, found on a balcony, second floor balcony, and he was talking to himself and people were worried that he would jump. Uh -huh. A police officer can make the determination that someone is mentally ill, that they're going to hurt themselves. And that's interesting, I think. And then, um, so he was taken in and evaluated and they decided that he wasn't... Um, didn't have enough mental capacity to do some, that he could hurt himself inadvertently. That was the worry. Mm -hmm. And that's the criteria, that you're a, a danger to yourself or to others. It's so interesting hearing about this documentary. As, as we've discussed, you know, my family, um, there was schizophrenia in my family. My uncle killed himself uh, before I was born, my mother's brother. And when my mother reflects back, my mom's now a member of a variety of organizations you know, around this stuff. She reflects back, she feels he was, he was mismedicated, the medication didn't exist at the time. He was given shock therapy, which, which has, I think, been proven at this point to be only effective in very limited circumstances. But my belief had been that schizophrenia was, was mostly under control now, and it, we weren't back to the dark ages of, of what my uncle dealt with in the late 60s and 70s. It sounds like it's not. It sounds like there's still a great deal of problems with treatment. Uh, you're right. Um, and by the way, I started from the same place. When I started working on this film, I thought that if people who are diagnosed with severe mental illness would just take their meds, they'd be fine, and so would we. And that turned out to be wrong. Um, and one of the reasons that's wrong is that psych meds, like all medications, have risk and benefits. They work for some people really well, but they also don't work for other people at all. Mm -hmm. There have been improvements on the meds as time has advanced, but even our top scientists now say that we really have a long way to go. And schizophrenia, as I've studied it a little bit, the, where it really manifests most of the time is at college age. It, yeah. It's what typically, what, what happens a lot of the time is it, it hits people in their early 20s, mm -hmm. they're at college, mm -hmm. and college has obviously moved away from the... Uh, a safe home environment. Well, well, the term used to be at, at, at parent. Uh, what was the term about? Uh, Supervision? Well, there, there used to be a, there was a philosophy that colleges were supposed to step in for parents. while the, But right. then there became a prevailing view that colleges do not have to act as a parent. And then, now you've got all these 20-year-olds, some of which develop schizophrenia, and are there's no supervision, no one checking, and that's why you have a, a suicide rate that goes on at college. Well, <clears throat> there is a high correlation between suicide and schizophrenia. I believe it's one in 10. Um, even though the perception is that schizophrenics are very dangerous and they're going to hurt other people, primarily they're doing harm to themselves. Um, but you're right, it does hit in the early 20s. Eric got hit when he was 19. He was in college, super bright guy, right? Um, genetics major, very, very, very smart, shy, personable, started having these, you know, alternate states, different experiences. Got to be very frightening, you know, to feel that you're mm -hmm. shifting and you don't understand where you are. And there is no home base, like you're saying, for care. Often I think the family becomes the home base for care. Mm -hmm. And what has been the reception so far? And are you still in contact with Eric? And, and how is he doing? OK, so I'm really happy to say. Uh, this story was like a, such a high stakes journey because here's Eric. He's dealing with his mental states. And there's the county. And they're intervening. And it's not really working out well. And I was really rooting for Eric. And I didn't know what was going to happen. But I can tell you today that Eric is doing great. He got 
a much lower dose that he was able to live with. He graduated from college, he has a job, and this summer he got married. So Eric's doing well. And by the way, that's not unusual. You know, most, the majority of people with schizophrenia will go on to have a life mm -hmm. with partners and relationships and jobs like we do. Well, Lisa Zumwalt, filmmaker and producer of Witness Documentary Films, a good story. We've seen the trailer. we got to see the whole thing. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much where, for Where can people me. see it? We're, we're not released yet. We're submitting to film festivals. I'll get back to you when Let us released. know. We'll have, we'll have you back when it's released. Uh, and uh, shoot East Hampton Film Festival. We, we covered the East Hampton Film Festival. It was great. You do? Yeah, we were there last year. Which one? East Hampton Film Festival. Oh, East Hampton. I plan to apply. Uh, uh, let me know. I'll put in a word. <laughs> okay, thank you thank so much, you. Lisa. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much.